Clarence emerged from the tent, looking disheveled and exhausted. Blood covered his apron and he was wiping Noah's blood from his hands as he walked towards Jonah and his mother. There was a grave look on his face. Deborah followed close behind, looking shaken, pale, and eyes wide as if she was horrified despite all of her training over the past five years. We have done all we can for now, said Clarence solemnly. He is clinging on, but... I cannot promise you he will survive the night or make a full recovery. Upon hearing this, Jonah's eyes swelled with tears. His heart was filled with both sadness and anger, anger towards himself. If he just hadn't called out to him like that, this may have all been avoided. This was his fault. He couldn't get that thought out of his head. He may have maimed or worse yet, caused the death of his own twin brother and the best friend he has ever known. Now the tears were flooding down his face. It's okay, Jonah. Noah is strong. He'll pull through. His mother said to him, placing a hand on his shoulder for comfort. You saved his life by bandaging him up before- Shut up! Jonah cried out, ripping himself away from his mother's warm touch. Deborah's eyes grew wider as she watched. You don't understand. This is entirely my fault. I called out to him when I seen the deer. I distracted him. He looked back at me. Me! I caused this! He was inconsolable, in a rage. His mother tried to say something else to him, and so did Clarence, but he couldn't hear a word of it. I need to get out of here. I can't be here. I need to clear my head. He said in a slightly calmer tone as he grabbed his bag of gear and disappeared from view into the forest. He was running at full speed, tears pouring from his eyes. He just needed to be alone. He couldn't face his mother. He couldn't face any of them. He was overcome with grief and guilt from what had happened. And he couldn't stay there and watch his brother die. Deeper and deeper he ran into the thick forest which spanned thousands of acres. He didn't care what direction he was going or how far away from the camp or civilization he retreated. As far as he was concerned, the further the better. Finally, after hours of travel, the sun was low and the forest began to grow dark. He found himself in a small clearing and he sat on a fallen tree and wept. In his mind, his brother was already dead. They had already read the death rites over his cold body and his mother cried and now understood how this was all his fault. He had killed his own kin. Surely she would never want to see him again. None of them would. He stayed in this depressive state for two whole days until his thirst and hunger demanded his attention. He was so exhausted. He looked in his bag to see what supplies he had left from the last job. There was still some water in his canteen and a bit of jerky. He devoured the jerky, barely even chewing it, nearly choking, and drank the rest of his water. His mind was a little more clear afterwards, and he realized he better put up a shelter and light a fire. He had to sort out his options, find out where he could get more water. He strung up his tarp over the fallen tree and began gathering firewood for the night. All this moving around kept things off his mind a bit, but he would get sudden flashes of Noah's broken and battered body lying in the road, and then flashes of his corpse lying there motionless. He hadn't slept for nearly three days at this point, and pure exhaustion was setting in and muddling his thoughts even further. Suddenly, he heard movement in the forest to his right. He shot up from grabbing more sticks and looked around him. His eyes narrowed while he tried to focus through the darkening forest. He thought he saw a large shadow slowly disappear behind a tree. He dropped the wood he had gathered for the fire and drew his gun as he started running toward the tree. But once he got there, there was nothing there, nor were there any signs that anything had been. Stop being an idiot, he mumbled to himself. You haven't slept for days. This is the woods. You're gonna hear stuff. He decided he better light his fire and try to get some sleep tonight. He made his way back to his camp and got the fire going using some birch bark and his fire steel. He wasn't able to find any more water on his search for wood, but at least he would be warm tonight. He unstrapped his bedroll from the bottom of his bag and began to unroll it to settle in for the night. It was only a thin foam mat and a wool blanket, but he was used to this sort of thing. He and Noah would often sleep just like this on their jobs hunting down dogmen, wendigos, rakes, and anything else that lurked in the night. He lay down and thought of his brother again. Tears started swelling in his eyes all over again. He shut his eyes tightly and rolled over. 
falling asleep. Jonah, what are you doing? A voice said, coming from behind him. It was a calm voice, laughing a bit. It was Noah's voice. Jonah quickly turned, overjoyed to hear his brother's voice. He was okay, but when he turned to face his beloved brother, what greeted him was a mangled mess of blood and decay. What are you doing still alive while I sit here rotting? It said in a very different tone. Why in the hell would you have made me hit that deer? What did I do to deserve that? No, no, it was an accident. No, I'm sorry. I swear I didn't mean to, Jonah said. I'm so sorry. Ah, you're sorry, are you? Damn shame sorries don't bring corpses back to life, huh? The rotted visage of Noah said to him. You should be here, not me. You should be the dead one. No, I'm so sorry. Forgive me, screamed Jonah, shouting himself awake. He could see in the warm glow of the dying embers that he was still in his camp, alone. He had been having a nightmare, but that nightmare solidified in his mind that his brother was dead. He had come to Jonah, and he hated him for what he had done to him. He's right, you know. You should be the dead one, a voice said. The voice echoed through Jonah's head as he cried. This is all your fault. You should feel guilty. You are a murderer. You can never go back to your family now. This voice was right. He was a murderer of his own brother. The price for such treason in the Trindell family was death. They would be hunting him down. That's right. They all know what you did. They will be coming to kill you. The voice echoed through his head once again. But, but it was an accident. I didn't mean to, Jonah said timidly. Do you think that matters to them? They don't know that. You were always jealous of him. They all knew it. He was older, taller, a better fighter. You always envied him for these things. The voice said knowingly, you, You're right, I did. They... They do, Jonah said with clarity. But you can't just lay down and let them hunt you, can you? You're finally free from the shadows of your brother. You have every right to protect yourself from them. They just don't understand you had to do it. You have to protect yourself. You have to strike. <laughs>